Hello, it's Alex, the Bookubus. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books I read in February. I read seven books and first up was Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. I read this as part of the From Hell book club which is hosted by Kelly at Kelly Hooked on Books. I will leave a link to her channel so definitely go check her out. It's a monthly book club and each month a book is selected from paperbacks from hell and this was February's selection which I was really pleased about because this is a book I've been meaning to read for years and just for whatever reason haven't. So. This was the perfect opportunity to finally pick it up. And I don't know if I need to say too much about this one because it is super famous, but it is a crime-based thriller and it is the first appearance of the character Hannibal Lecter. This one is about a killer known as the Tooth Fairy who has already killed a couple of times. And one of the characters we're following is an FBI agent who is brought out of retirement to try and help track this killer down. And I really enjoyed this one, I thought it was really solid, it was definitely quite a page turner and I thought the story was pretty interesting. There were definitely places where the pacing was a little off or just some of the details were not quite as riveting but overall it was a really good story, really compelling and it definitely got pretty gruesome at times which was always good. Don't know if I really have too much more to say about this one, it's so famous and well known and I'm sure many of you have already read it but if you haven't I would recommend picking it up. I rated this one four stars. Then I went for a point horror book and picked up The Fever by Diane Ho. This is about a teenage girl called Duffy who is currently in hospital with a fever and one night she hears some strange noises and the following day is trying to figure out exactly what might have happened there and whether it was a dream or whether it was just down to the drugs that she's on at the moment because of her illness but she feels like something isn't quite right and she is trying to figure out what's going on and during this she ends up falling victim to a few accidents around the hospital but of course are they really accidents or is someone out to get her. I really enjoyed this one too. I thought it was a pretty interesting story. I thought the character of Duffy, while she did get a bit obnoxious at times, she was still a pretty sympathetic character. I thought she was pretty believable and I remember having to spend a bit of time in hospital when I was a teenager and it definitely conveyed the same feeling that I remember from that time. It's kind of a weird feeling when you are yeah, cooped up in a hospital bed and there are strange noises and other people around and you're kind of lonely at the same time because you know you're away from your friends and family and your regular day-to-day -day life. Also you feel ill obviously that's the reason you're in hospital in the first place and you're tethered to your bed pretty much because you know you're probably hooked up to an IV or whatever else and yeah it's just not a pleasant experience. So I thought the author captured that feeling really well and this one definitely did go in a pretty interesting direction. I didn't guess who the culprit was at the end so the reveal was really good and the things that happened throughout this book there were definitely some like real stakes, you know, people were at real risk of harm and stuff like that so it wasn't just like prank phone calls and stuff like there was some like serious stuff going on here. This was a good one, I rated it three and a half stars. Then I read The Mist in the Mirror by Susan Hill and I already have a separate review video for this so I will leave a link to that if you want to hear more of my thoughts. This is a supernatural tale of kind of Victorian style following a character who travels to England in order to follow the footsteps of an explorer that he has 
you know been following the adventures of and he wants to find out more about this guy and so yeah travels to England to look into his past but of course uncovers some dark things there. I did enjoy this one, I thought the writing and the atmosphere were excellent. My main problem is that it didn't quite end in a very satisfying way which was a bit of a shame but yeah go check out my review video if you want to hear a bit more. I rated this one three and a half stars. Next up was Vampire Child by Ruby Jean Jensen. I already have a review video for this one too so again I will leave a link to that if you want to go check that out and hear more of my thoughts but this was a four star read or a four bat read. I totally forgot about my bat rating system in my last Vampire Vault video. It was only the second video and I, like, I already forgot the whole bat thing. Anyway, four bats for this guy. This is about a family and the mother suspects her teenage son Patrick of being a vampire. There is a chain of events that splits the family up and the mother is trying to track Patrick down in order to kill him and the teenage daughter Babette is trying to get to Patrick first in order to save him because she thinks her mother is delusional. I really enjoyed this one, I thought it was a really interesting story and the vampire element especially was pretty unique and yeah had some really great moments so yeah four bats out of five. Okay and the final three books I read in February were ones on my Kindle. First up was Invisible Chains by Michelle Renee Lane. This one has a historical setting and is following a slave called Jacqueline who has been treated awfully by her owners ever since she was a child and one day a gentleman arrives who has business with Jacqueline's master and this guy turns out to be a vampire and he takes a liking to Jacqueline and after some things happen she and the vampire are forced to go on the run and try and yeah get to somewhere safe uh, in order to start a new life out of slavery and this follows Jacqueline's journey and she meets a variety of characters along the way, some who are trying to help her, some who are very strange. So I thought this one was quite an interesting mix of elements. I did go into this one expecting a horror novel and I'm not sure that's exactly what I got. I would describe this more of maybe an urban fantasy but with a historical setting and then there were some elements of horror and also some magical realism. And yeah, not all of those things, I will admit, are really my cup of tea, so it was at a bit of a disadvantage from the get-go because I went in expecting one thing and got something else. You know, that's not the fault of the book, of course, that's just my own personal taste. But I did think it was well written and it did have some interesting elements here. My main problem with this book though was the fact that things just seemed to happen, you know, a particular character would conveniently turn up when needed or yeah something would play out that just seemed to be very convenient. So yeah I just have a hard time with that when things just feel forced in order to move the story along in a certain way. So yeah there were definitely things I liked here and then some other things that didn't quite work for me. Overall I rated this one three stars. And then the next two books, the final two books that I read, were actually sent to me by the authors for review. And I generally don't accept books for review. I, I mean, to be fair, I don't really get many people contacting me to ask me to review their stuff. And when I do, it's generally some genre that I have like no interest in. But anyway, these two authors contacted me a short while ago and offered to send me their new book for review and they both sounded really interesting so I said yes. First up was Shelter for the Damned by Mike Thorne. 
and I had previously read his short story collection, Darkest Hours, and it was a bit of a mixed bag for me. You know, some stories I liked and some not so much, but there were definitely some stories that really stood out to me in that collection, one in particular that was amazing. So I was definitely keen to read more of his work. And this is his debut novel. It is about a teenage boy called Mark. He has two friends and the three of them just kind of keep themselves to themselves. They don't really have many other friends at school. And Mark especially has some anger issues and violent tendencies. And he has been in trouble at school previously for fighting. Anyway, the three boys one day stumble upon this shack in their neighborhood that they hadn't noticed before and they decide to go in and explore and they find that it is completely abandoned so they think cool this will be a great spot to just be able to hang out and smoke and yeah just shoot the shit in private but this place has a strange feeling and Mark finds himself really drawn to the place when he's not there and this develops into quite a strong pull to visit the shack. And one of these visits, something happens and something is set in motion that Mark becomes involved with and can't back out of. Yeah, I don't want to say too much more about the plot of this one, but I really enjoyed this one. I really liked his writing. I thought it was excellent. I thought the characters were all really well written and yeah he definitely captured that teenage angst of not feeling like you belong, that you don't fit in, that you are struggling to figure out who you are and why are you even here and all of that stuff that is really difficult to deal with. There's definitely a cosmic horror element to this story which I thought was really really well done there's definitely some gruesome moments as well and yeah I thought his writing really shone in those sections and this one also has a lot of social commentary on themes like toxic masculinity and addiction so there's a lot to dig into within the story as well as the coming of age part and the cosmic horror part. Yeah, it was a really interesting mix and one that I thought was really well done. I thought this one was excellent. I got really invested in the story and found it to be a really captivating read. I just needed to know what was going to happen next and how this story was going to end. I rated this one four stars and I would definitely recommend checking it out. This one came out at the end of February, I believe. So it is available to get your hands on. And last up, I read Anoka by Shane Hawke. He is an indigenous author and this is a short story collection and his debut. As generally is the case with short story collections, some of these I liked and then some didn't quite work for me, but I did find that even the stories that weren't my favourites, I could still tell that he is a really talented writer and that really did come through throughout the whole collection. The two stories that did really stand out to me that I really thought were excellent was Orange, which is a very short story so hard to say too much about it but it's kind of following one particular character who is dealing with the effects of his past and yeah I thought that one was great and then the other one that stood out to me was Dead America which touches on themes of identity and authenticity and there's an element to the story that is super gross and gruesome and it involves spiders and yeah I'm not a huge fan of spiders so yeah that was pretty damn effective so yeah, because of my mixed experience with reading the collection, I rated this one three and a half stars, but yeah, he's an author that I would definitely be keeping an eye out on to see what he does next. And yeah, if this sounds like an interesting collection to you, then absolutely go check it out. This one is already out. So again, you can go get your hands on that if you want to give it a read. So that was everything I read in the month of February. 
let me know if you've read any of these. I would love to hear what you thought. Or let me know what you read in February, if there was any particular highlights for you or anything that you would recommend. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!